I was like 18, 19, and 20 in college, living in Boston, still at home. I had to withdraw from school, and I was living in my mom's basement, like hated by my mom and dad. Oh, like, God. I leave you. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. So many romantic dreams. I was working at a gym from like four in the morning to like eight in the morning, uh, and then I was going to class. And, and I was also beginning to think about being a Navy SEAL, and so I was training like a lunatic as well. So I was a full day. And at the end of the day, I would throw on skates, like unwind for like a couple of hours before I go to bed. I like I don't even remember if I ever lost. Everything's gonna be fine. And I, I remember over the course of maybe six months of playing this game, I started getting these little notifications on my TV. It was like one new message, and after a while, it started saying like seventy new messages. A thousand new messages, twenty thousand new messages, and I thought, okay, what is this? And so I go into my like email function, and it was literally like hundreds of thousands of messages, all the way from EA Sports, you're the number one world ranked player, all the way down to like people Whoa. challenging me, like you're not even that good, and all this like hate mail, like you think you're so good, you do you, man. I load up the, lo the leaderboard, and there it is, my gamer tag, Pedroia1, the number one ranked person in the world. Dude, I was a fucking horrible Bud student. I was just lucky. It's like anyone that says that Bud, like there are people that make it and those that don't, like that's not true. There's such a huge element of just having good good stretch of the days, getting lucky with injury. So like you get the third phase of buds. I mean, it's pretty much like first phase all over again in that it's very like physically demanding and it, it's a lot of crappy things. But early on, um, you you basically like huddle up in a group and they just light off a bunch of CS grenades. So like the military grade strength, tear gas. It completely encapsulated us. Totally like the fight or flight instinct kicked in and I am pure flight. Like dude, I bolted before I thought, like fell face first into a fucking cactus. The instructor's like looking at me like, holy shit, what's wrong with you? Get the fuck back in the group. And I didn't. And I remember like so after it like settles and the gas settles, I was like, holy shit, that's so bad that I just did that. I'm like devastated. And it was like, who to blame? No one but me. And I went on a deployment, my first deployment, which was to Afghanistan, pretty confident that I would do a full career. And, and by all accounts, the deployment that we went on was kind of what I expected it to be. It was kinetic, you know, we were doing things that people would say that's what a Navy SEAL does. And at the end of the deployment, I was, not me, our whole, our whole team was involved in a kind of epic firefight slash ambush that uh, resulted in a grenade, actually a couple grenades landing next to me and next to my five other teammates that were right next to me and it detonated and uh, yeah. get it, get it, get it. it actually was you know, flown out through the, the medic, medevac procedure, I was flown home. You know, being around my wife for the first time after getting back after this deployment and her like, you know, packing this wound that's like in my hip and it's like totally obscene, it, it opens this discussion between us where, you know, what, what might have been a done deal, i.e. John will do a career, it, it was not that anymore. Uh, at the end of 2017, we had an event in San Francisco that was very loud, very public, and by the way, an amazing event. Seals do not like it when people like me start telling everybody that I was a Navy SEAL, and here's my war story, and here's this, and there is an enormous, enormous resistance. People in that community their, their gut reaction is that person is exploiting something that they right. themselves alone did not fill. As I came up to speak at this beautiful restaurant. There's all these people in the room. 
and I I took the, the stage, really the center of the room, and I had a microphone. And I've, I've given like 50 of these things. And I remember looking around and being like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this, doing this.